Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. I continue to receive numerous messages from patients and their family about the lack of care from the home and community care support services. Patients are receiving below standard level and quality of care from overwork and underpaid home care nurses and PSW, not to mention the multiple missed visits weekly. A year and a half ago, this government rushed through their Bill 175. The goal was to connecting people in, to Home and Community Care Act. Well, what did they connect, Mr. Speaker? The same legacy private for-profit providers that underpay their staff, shortchange patient care. The result is that no one came for Mrs. X for days after her surgery. A special need child in my riding cannot attend school because there is no provider available to help them at school. Not to mention Mrs. Innocente's mom, who is very medically fragile, but cannot get confirmation that the home care worker is vaccinated. When these families approach the government to make a complaint, they say, oh, uh, bring your complaint to the providers. <laughs> when the providers, they bring their complaint, nothing happens. The government funds home care. It is responsible for this important part of our health care system, but yet this program fails more people than it helps uh, daily. It has to change. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Next, the member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure to rise today to share the story of a true inspiration. A spiritual leader, professor of medicine, cardiovascular surgeon, philanthropist, a lifelong teacher and priest, Dr. Budhendranath Dubey. His contribution includes building Anand Bhavan, a home for seniors, and Montessori School in Ontario, providing shelter to orphan girls in India, offering free dialysis to the patients in need at Dubey Medical Center, and providing computers to youth in Guyana. In 1993, Dr. Dubey was awarded the Order of Ontario and Queen's Golden and Diamond Jubilee Award in Canada in 2012. Guided by the principle of Vasudev Kutumkam, the world is one family, Dr. Dubey has played a vital role in promoting Hinduism's core teachings while advocating for religious diversity and inclusiveness that make our province beautiful. He is founder of Vishnu Mandir in Richmond Hill, a 27,000 square feet facility, features a Canadian Museum of Indian Civilization embodying the principle of ahimsa nonviolence. Dr. Dubey, Ab Jio Hajaru Sal. Thank you for being the champion for Sanatam Dharma. Thank you for leading the path for us today and for the generations to come. Mr. Speaker, I would like to express my heartfelt Gratitude to Dr. Dubey for strengthening our province through his passion for community service and community well-being. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for York Southwestern. Thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning on behalf of the decent and hardworking people of York Southwestern. Recently, I hosted a virtual town hall on eye care with residents and, ca and eye care providers from York Southwestern. I heard from residents whose children cannot get their eyes tested and from seniors who cannot get eye testers that could literally save their vision. This is unacceptable and unnecessary situation is due to this government's inability to negotiate a fair deal with optometrists. When will this government stop their dangerous games that are only putting children and seniors' vision at risk and negotiate in a serious and fair manner? Louisa, who participated in our town hall, said, and I quote, it is going to cost the healthcare system 10 times as much for staff down the road that is not being diagnosed. Once you do it at a later stage, it is too late. Michael stated, and I quote, the situation is urgent and my long-term health is being directly affected. The government needs to get back to the table and address this issue quickly so that people like me can get on with their lives. What does what does the government have to say to Louise and Michael, and when will they take responsibility and stop pointing fingers and finally bring the fairness uh, that the optometrist deserve and the fairness that seniors like Louisa and Michael needs in our community of York South Western? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Speaker. I am happy to rise in this great house today to talk a little about the largest single employer in my home riding of Brantford Brant. Ferrero is a company that is near and dear to many people in Ontario and indeed all over the world. As a matter of fact, by the beloved high quality products that they make every single day. Last Thursday, the Premier and I were given a tour of Ferrero's spectacular Brantford production plant where they make Nutella, wow. Tic Tac, Ferrero Rocher, wow. and Nutella and Go. The sweet smell of freshly roasted hazelnuts and chocolate, a combination put together by the company's founders Pietro Giovanni and Piera Fierro Ferrero, will always be etched in my memory. We were most impressed by the quality levels that far exceed the industry standards, so much so that in 2019, Ferrero opened its own on-site cocoa processing plant in Brantford so they could process raw cocoa beans directly from country of origin to ensure freshness and their very exacting standards. So the next time you dip into that jar of Nutella in your kitchen pantry or share a Ferrero Rocher over the upcoming holidays, know that it was made by Canadian workers with the freshest ingredients by some of the finest people in Brantford Brant. To everyone working at Ferrero, on behalf of the province of Ontario, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. The next statement, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Yumna Afsal, Madiha Salman, Talat Afsal, Salman Afzal. Four out of five family members were murdered in a terrorist white supremacist attack earlier this year in London, Ontario. Fayab Zassal, a boy of nine, was the only survivor from this attack, and he was put into serious condition from this terrorist attack. This is just one of the many acts of hatred that have recently targeted Muslims in Ontario. And I remember talking to Muslims after this terrorist attack, and they described to me the impact of this violence how Muslim women were afraid to leave their home wearing their hijab, how Muslim families had made the terrible decision to not go for evening walks wearing their traditional clothing out of fear that they too would be attacked. And that's why the calls from the Muslim community after this terrorist attack were so clear. Yes, we must condemn this violence, but the time for words alone are over. We need systemic change to challenge and combat Islamophobia and hate in Ontario. And that's why the Ontario NDP has partnered with the National Council of Canadian Muslims to put forward the Our London Family Act to make sure that Muslims, again, are never afraid to walk the streets of Ontario. And that's why I'm calling on the Conservative government to do the right thing and to pass this act as soon as possible. Thank you. The next statement, the member for York Centre. Speaker, I was born and spent the first nine years of my life in Communist Soviet Union. So when I allege that the government is engaged in conduct one would expect from the Communist regime, I don't do so lightly. But judge for yourself. You're going you're gonna to withdraw. Withdraw. Former Chief of Staff Dean French tried to appoint his son's friend and wife's cousin to lucrative positions abroad for which they weren't qualified. That's textbook communism. The government forced private businesses to hang a sticker containing political speech at their place of business. That's communism. The government tried to put itself above the law by giving itself absolute immunity from litigation with the Crown Liability Proceedings Act. That's communism. With Bill 218, the government rewrote negligence law applicable to long-term care homes in the middle of a trial, making it impossible for families to get closure and justice. That's communism. The government invoked the notwithstanding clause, the nuclear option, to overrule a court decision for the first time in Ontario's history, and over what? Over elections legislation that helps the government get re-elected. That's communism. And now the government continues to solve the democracy with another set of emergency The next statement. Member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker. November is Women's Abuse Prevention Month. This is a month for all of us to stand with women and girls against any form of abuse. Abuse comes in many forms, whether emotional, physical, sexual, and we need to be aware of the signs. The number of reported incidents is unfortunate and shocking. 
half of women aged 16 have experienced some form of violence. There are outstanding organizations concentrated on supporting young women and girls who are trying to leave their situations. In Halton, Savas and the Halton's Women's Place are helping survivors by providing a safe and comfortable environment with dedicated resources to overcome the emotional trauma that has been experienced. These two organizations also provide proactive educational sessions to the general public with the key goal of prevention through education. On November 25th, from 7 to 8 p.m., the Halton Women's Place will be hosting a free education event virtually with the topic Community Conversation of the Role of Males in Ending Gender-Based Violence. As an aside, I did want to mention I made a contribution to the Halton Women's Place in memory of my great friend Andrew McMurtry's mother, Teresa, who passed away on November 1st. Teresa was a great woman and a loving mother who will be missed greatly. I couldn't think of a better way to honour Teresa's legacy than by supporting the Halton Women's Place. Savas and Halton's Women's Place are truly changing the lives of women and girls, and I cannot thank you enough for the meaningful work you are doing. Thank you, Speaker. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My riding of Brampton North has a hospital which is the only hospital in Brampton which is a full-fledged hospital, Brampton Civic Hospital, which cares for over 700,000 people in Brampton. Earlier this year, the government promised an additional hospital in Brampton. What we've learned since, Mr. Speaker, is that this government is providing only an additional wing to Peel Memorial Hospital. This is not enough. On top of that, the government has promised 250 beds for Peel Memorial. We need 850 beds in order to bring Brampton up to the Ontario average. I'm applauding. I want this government, I want Brampton South, I want Brampton West to listen to me. We need a full-fledged hospital. We need an additional hospital in Brampton. What's happening right now is, is, is incredible, Mr. Speaker. We are seeing many people in Brampton going to Georgetown or other places in the GTA just to get care. Right now, the hospital which we have at Peel Memorial will not be able to service people who have heart attacks, people who have strokes, people who are cancer patients. So this is why I'm calling for this government to stop what's going on in Brampton. We need a full-fledged hospital. We need better health care, and I wish this government would stand up and listen and do the right thing. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, uh, Speaker. The the government is investing approximately $350,000 to increase mental health supports for post-secondary students at Durham College and my riding and Ontario Tech University. This funding, Speaker, is part of an additional $8.7 million for Ontario post-secondary institutions announced in the 2021 Ontario Economic Outlook and Fiscal Review Build Ontario. Importantly, Speaker, this investment builds on the government's record supports to address mental health and addiction challenges from the 2021 budget for a total of $28.5 million in the 221-222 mental health supports at Ontario post-secondary institutions. Speaker, Ontario's publicly assisted colleges, universities and Indigenous institutes play an important role in supporting the mental health needs of Ontario's post-secondary students, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Speaker, our government is committed, absolutely committed, to protecting our progress against the COVID-19 pandemic and providing mental health supports for those in Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham who need them. Another example of this government listening carefully to residents in the region of Durham. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.